Hey guys, welcome to episode DOS of the Storytime playlist. Um, I'm excited for this one. It's a shame I plan to do it with my mate Louis. As you know, I travelled with him for half of my gap year. Our first stop was Salt Lake City, but then we moved on to the national parks, and we've got so many stories to tell from the national parks. Like, funny, serious, interesting, it ranges significantly. But this is episode three. <laughs> But this is episode two, and I hope you like it. So let's roll that intro. We were both 18 at the time, and we were too young to rent a car in America. Our friends were, were keen to give us a car. You know, we probably thought it was best not to, uh, just in case anything did happen. Me and Louis had to do a, a lot of hitchhiking, um, which was a serious test for us. I'm going to start the clock on two minutes up in the top right up here, so let's go. Right, so I remember our first hitchhiking session, we were scared we were so worried we didn't know what we were going to expect like if you do it in the UK like you just don't know who you're gonna get as a driver or some or someone that you're going to pick up so it's not very sort of like seen well upon in the UK and my brother saying that my brother was coming back from a night out the other day and he tried hitchhiking but it didn't work I just remember standing on the side of the road this huge road we were like we had mountains surrounding us beautiful mountains like 35 degree weather it was it was incredible and we were having these trucks pass us pass us pass us and we were like we actually need to hitchhike so we were very you know very awkwardly very nervously sort of like putting our thumbs out to the side like please pick us up we need to get from a to b we were worried to start with and i'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that but i'm sure all of you if you if you wanted to hitchhike or so get some get some random person's car you're gonna be worried so um yeah we, we were we were kind of scared we you know got better and better at it and it got to the point where we were like yo what's up everybody it's alex and louis we're 18 years old we're from london we're traveling in america we're seeing your awesome country can we get from here to here and it you know it was working out like i think the longest we tried to hitchhike for was probably about an hour and a half but that was in quite a quiet area it's very successful in the national parks in america but apparently not very successful in the cities we hitchhike with these guys called dan and tiffany dan and tiffany if you're watching we love you guys so much and can we still join for your wedding? That would be awesome. That's the sort of friendship that me and Louis had with Dan and Tiffany and their dog Bella. We met them in our campground in Yellowstone. It was our first campground and we'd hitchhiked for about three hours from Grand Teton all the way through to Yellowstone. Uh, stopping off on the way for lunch and beers, that's for another story time. It changed our entire journey whilst we were in Yellowstone. We planned to be there for five days and we ended up only being there for three days. So we met them, so we actually brought back our um, our leave date on the Greyhound bus by a couple of days. We planned to do Old Faithful, Grand Prismatic Springs, Firehof, actually we didn't have any we basically planned to do those two things in two days, but having met Dan and Tiffany, we were able to do those two things in one day and find this amazing place called Firehole Falls. This place was spectacular. It couldn't have been found if you were walking around because it's just too far away from anything. So me, Dan, Tiffany and Louie and Bella, we found this Firehole Falls and it was spectacular. It was something else. They helped us change our entire journey to become more... Uh, what's the word? Reasonable. So the way we met them was, as I said, we travelled three hours through from Grand Teton to our first campground in Yellowstone, and we got there about 9 p.m. and we had a we had a food problem. We had no food. All the shops were shut because it was a it was Labour Day or something. We were stuck, so we had to walk 20 minutes down a completely dark road. And in the national parks in America, that's very dangerous because you've got walls. You've got grizzly bears, you've got black bears, you've got everything under the sun that could possibly kill you. Um, so, not gonna lie, Louis and I were scared. Luckily enough, James and Melissa gave us a, a bear spray canister in case anything happens. And we just had the mentality that if a bear came to kill us, we'd just knock it out. Easy, simple. Went to a restaurant, unfortunately, because it was so bloody expensive. I maybe got about five or six pieces of pasta for about $25. Now that is extraordinarily expensive and I hardly got any food. So we weren't very happy, We just had, it was something we had to do. So we came back from the restaurant and yeah, we, we went to our tent site, but there was a bit of like activity 
next door. There was a fire going, there were two couples, Dan and Tiffany, uh, and another younger couple there. Can't remember their names, but we, you know, we didn't stay in touch with them. They, they went within an hour of us being at the fire at the campground. But yeah, I just approached them. I was like, "Hey guys, would you mind if we we joined? Like, we've we've just arrived in the in today. We we want to, you know, get to know people." And Dan and Tiffany were like, "Hell yeah! Like, join join us." So we joined them, sat down at the fire. They had some leftover food, so they gave that to us, and we, you know, waffed that down. We were so hungry. So yeah, that was that was the first thing with Dan and Tiffany. They were really really nice people. So we sat around the fire drinking tequila that they bought from South America with a machete that they just gave us because we had nothing to chop wood and make fires in the future. This machete Dan found in the woods at his house in New Hampshire and yeah he just gave it to us so we were, we, Louis, I didn't have any room in my bag so Louis had this machete sort of like hanging out of his rucksack as we were like hitchhiking and walking around the national park. It's probably why our time hit, trying to hitchhike increased slightly after meeting Dan and Tiffany. Um, that was quite funny and Dan and Tiffany's story, they sold everything three years ago now, bought a camper van and put a bed in it, like kit kitted it out for travelling around the world. They also had a very cute dog called Bella. Um, when we first approached them, obviously Bella was on her guard, like... They came bounding over. <laughs> so we had a really, really good time with Dan, Tiffany and Bella driving around Yellowstone, you know, going to all of these iconic places to go and see. More than that, they helped us out with everything. They didn't ask for fuel costs. There was one evening where they bought food for all of us, so we had chicken, Cajun chicken, and we bought some sweet potatoes, so we, we chopped them up and fried them like whilst camping to, to create chips, and, and they were really, really good. And Yeah, we just had a quality time with them. Also, <laughs> I remember this day going into this campground, and um, we arrived, and, and America's a bit cheeky in this sort of sense. It's where a hike, uh, it's understandable, a hike biker, uh, i.e. me and Louie, could pay $9 per person for one, uh, one night's accommodation at the campground, whereas a camper van will pay $30 plus for one person. So it was a bit stupid, so we had Louie go in, this is what me and Louis were doing all around Grand Teton in Yellowstone. Louis, Louis and I went in, paid for one one hiker biker, and then went to um, and then pitched up that night. So I remember waking up in the morning, and the uh, the ground the groundsman coming around just saying like, "Oh, you you paid for one hiker biker, but there's a camper van, and there's there's two people on the camper van and two hiker bikers. That should be about hundred dollars." So unfortunately, we had to pack up really really quickly that morning and just head off. And so we didn't really get much time to say goodbye to Dan and Tiffany, which was such a shame. However, when we were back in Salt Lake City, they were about three hours south of us and they drove three hours north to come and have lunch with us at our favourite Mexican place in Salt Lake City called Barbacoa and that was just a really really good time. We were on the university campus playing frisbee with a dog, having a really good throwback time um, and had some frozen yoghurt. So those were our favourite people we hitchhiked with and I'll see you in the next video next week. So I hope you liked the video, I'll catch you later.